stay stuck in unhealthy and dysfunctional relationships. Right? Like, why? You ever ask yourself that? Why are you staying still here? You ever been with somebody and just kind of wouldn't leave, couldn't leave, something happened there. Oh, that's my baby mama, so, you know, that's why I'm staying here. I mean, come on, man. I mean, you know, is that the real reason? Uh, or I don't think I can make it without them could be one of the other reasons. Why do we stay, uh, why do we stay stuck in unhealthy? They're unhealthy and dysfunctional, right? Some of the dysfunction might be related to, I grew up with a dysfunctional mom. I grew up with a dysfunctional auntie, grandma, all of them was dysfunctional. I grew up in a dysfunctional household where drinks and bottles and empty bottles and bottles from last year is still in the living room, only coffee table on the floor. Nobody cleans up. I grew up in that, so it's not unnormal and unusual that I'm living in a house, the same kind of house that I grew up in, right? So you ask yourself, why? It says, there are numerous, it says, there seems to be numerous reasons that people stay in dysfunctional and unhealthy relationships. <laughs> it's been said that it is very easy to get in these kinds of relationships, but for many of us, it seems to be very hard to get out and let go. And this exercise, we would like you to help us understand why we stay in dysfunctional relationships when we are not happy, right? It's, you know, we ask ourselves, why do we stay? It says, number one says, do you stay because you're married and you respect the vows you make? Uh, anybody met? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Some of us might stay because we're married. If she was just our girlfriend, some of us might say, I would have been gone. Been right? Gone. If the wind blew funny, I probably would have been gone. She probably would have been gone. Right? It was probably some nicer looking guys walking by that she could have got with. Right? Somebody probably tempted her or propositioned her. But at the same time, maybe the vows somewhat was what held us and keeps us, right? And the rules that we believe are attached to the vow. Number two says, do you stay because of financial support from your partner? I mean, come on now. Come on, dog. You know that. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, look, 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 look. Sometimes. I'm not pointing no fingers. You know, I mean, some people say I point to them, but, you know. So, so, I'm just saying, have you ever just had somebody, because, you know, all jobs don't last forever. No, and don't. sometimes it's her turn to, you know, sometimes it's her spot. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it's her car, it's, it's her couch, or it's her section eight, sometimes, right? That makes it a lot easy to, boom, to be with baby, Right, because it's spot, right? We'd be staying in Sacramento or something. Or somewhere. Nine, right? Maybe. Yeah. See, maybe so, so we have some, right? It's like, this is convenient. Then sometimes she stay close to the spot, right? That's why I got her in the first place. Because I'm, I, I get my money down the street, but man, I got the spot here. I'm close. Hey, but guess I, what? In the Bible, it says a two-fold card is better than one. A two-fold card is better than one. So, I believe is if I mess with her, right, and she mess with me, right, and I got my little hustle over here, and she got her hustle food stamps over here, right, with her GA and her welfare check over here, we're going to always have some food, right? Because nice. she got two six or three and a half kids, or she got, no, she got that, she got the ADD. She got the kids, but then she also got the ADD. Right, you know what the ADD is, right? Right, right? The ADD is, right, she got all them kids, and then the ADD, not the mental ADD, is the all different daddy ADD. So she got all that going. So what we do, right, we got her, and it's a little bit comfortable, and we can make it a little bit better, right? We can even throw barbecue sometimes because it's health food stamps with all the ADD kids, right? And, and we can just, boom, I cook the grill for the fire up, you know what I'm saying, and boom, right? It's like cool, right? And they like, man, how much you selling them plates for? He say, well, you know what, man? Uh, we ain't even selling that, man. You know, I'm a motherfucker hungry, so, you know. Let people get the money. No, 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 I'm rich looking way too good. And I ain't sharing, I ain't selling that either. So, 
So we find ourselves in caught up in the scene. Number three says, do you stay because of the time and the money you have invested in your partner? Right? Sometimes it's be like, you know <coughs> that you've done a lot here. You know when there was a situation and you cashed out, you just got this money from the lawsuit, and you gave her some of the money to take care of some real important business. You helped her mother save her house. You did different stuff. And so it's like, I'm not going to leave you. I do not go nowhere. And then it's That's like, it's like, it's like here, yeah, yeah, I, I, you yeah. bought her clothes, you bought her this and that. When you went and bought you a pair of sneakers, you bought her a pair of sneakers. And it's like, for some of us, it's hard to just say, get on. Right? Nah, and then bro. some of the sickness for some of us as patients, because we're actually patients, this is a hospital here. Some of us as patients, right, we don't want them to leave with the clothes we bought them. Right? We want to keep the clothes. Uh, and wear them? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked that far. But I know there are a lot of patients yeah, that's that keep women's clothes on. They keep women's clothes to let them shoes if they can afford them. They keep their stuff, right? I mean, yeah, a drawer full of pennies. Now you've got all these drawers, some of them you need to throw away anyway because they old, right? You need some new drawers, right? But you got the ones that's a little tore up, now you got her tore up panties in your drawer, right? I don't know why you're holding on to them, but we don't want to let go. It's a sickness also in us. There's a sickness in them. Then the sickness says, I'll tear your shit up. Right? And you ain't wore that motherfucker, them motherfucking 20 pair of pants in three, four years. You probably can't even feel it. But you mad that she holding on to him. Right? And then, you know, and she said she's going to cut him up. Now you want to catch you 52 weeks of domestic violence because she's going to cut them pants up that you wasn't going to wear anyway, that you're supposed to throw away anyway. Right? So it's like, let it go. I mean, can you get you so you can it fit you? But we have a sickness on holding on. And he's like, I can't let her go because of all I did for her. Well, you should do something. Who are you with? Are you going to hold on to the 60 relationships you've been in in your lifetime? You're going to hold them all hostage? Tie a big rope around all of them? So you must have to that. Number four says, do you stay because you think no one else will want to put up with you but them? Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy question. You said, well, how can he say, you know, but, but there is not a plan with you. Yeah? Well, I, I might point it so much. <laughs> uh, but, but, but look, part of us coming to some level of reality that we know we're assholes. We know that there's a turning point in most relationships. We know, some of us know we start out very smooth at the beginning. You know, but there's a left turn we make. You know, saying maybe two months in, three months in, you know, there's another channel of getting irritated. There's a channel with some of us that we don't remember. We're not actually pointing at him, we point at him, <laughs> right? But this dude, right, he'll knock people out. He'll beat her down and come in here and say, I never get a woman in my life. I said, not, not. You, not you, I know you have a, a woman, right? Go ahead and get Okay, Chris didn't get a woman, but the other Chris here a woman because Chris drinks and blacks out. So just imagine the shit he does. He used to drive. I mean, when you drive through the garage, you know, you know what I'm saying? That picture window on the side, you know what I'm saying? You drive the whole car in the house. Now the car is in the middle of the and Steve, he just makes out of the car, he just makes out of the car, and goes upstairs and goes to bed. Right? Has no idea there's a car in the middle of it. Right? So he's blackout stadium. So nobody is going to just meet somebody that's at that place in their life and accept them. So a lot of times we don't believe nobody will put up with us. And we're probably right. When you get to such a point of not loving yourself and doing Ignorant stuff all the time. You won't even get two days in a new relationship if you don't straighten some things out. So, but old W over here, old Sprung over here, old Mary woman over here, she goes, 
she might have been taught from her family and her, her generation before her, once you get with somebody, you stay with them. You know, and if you marry them, you stay with them for life, to death do us part. That's an ignorant ass thing mm-hmm. to be hooking up with them um, for the rest of your life. Especially if it's toxic. And it's toxic. Right. I mean, she she pulling knives out, she pouring, you know, because she on the tweet and she might decide to get some of your drink. Now she pouring gas all over the bed. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna set your ass on fire. Right? So real quick, uh five. Five. It says, do you stay because things seem familiar to where you grew up? Number six says, do you stay because you have nowhere else to go? Most of the time, it's smart. That was 2009. 2009, again. Again. <laughs> you would have been out of there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, she would have chased you down, too. She would have followed that ass. She did. Right? She would have GPS. You know, they had a GPS oh, back there. Tracking devices. Right? I know you can use them sometimes. Right? Okay. So, um, do you stay because you think that you cannot make it without them? Oh, get back to number five one. Number five says, do you stay because things seem familiar to you where you grew up? No, I know, it's not to be safe. Okay, do you stay because you have nowhere else to go? I, I had to get Katrina to get me away from the bed. Katrina. <laughs> so you think the water has to come away from But other than that, you've probably been still stuck. I've probably still been stuck. Or, or dead. What? Or dead. 2005? Thanks to Katrina. Uh, <laughs> number seven. <laughs> Do you stay because you think no one will ever make it out to you? Okay, number eight says, do you stay because you can't stand to think of him or her being with someone else other than you? That is a that is a thing, a reality. Yeah. We don't want you. We tell that frog, that hoe, that itch or whatever. We tell her, I don't want your don't you work his ass one. We remind her on a regular basis, especially you see, right? So we like, <laughs> we like, we like. But, but at the same time, the, the, the catch, the hook, the spirit of, of being used to the sickness, right, caught up in that motion of it, tells us, I don't want nobody else with you. I can't stand to see some other joker. But if it's all bad, you should be grateful that somebody else has it. Hey, you should be truth. praying for the dude that gets it, right? And praying that he don't let it go when she come back to you. That's we should be very yeah, happy. But we so <coughs> sick that we'll go get in a fight with this nice gentleman that has done that to you, right? You know, he's nice, but he's sick and he's needy. He's needy. He take it up anything. He picked up your trash, yeah. right? <laughs> that garbage that you was with, that you were so in love with, right? Or she picked up, or they pick up us because we garbage too sometimes. So it, it, it's just a trip. Uh, number nine? Yeah. Okay, do you stay because you can't stand the thought of being by yourself? Some of us, even with friends, we always got to be around 20 different dudes. We always got to be at every party. We can't really be in our own company, right? We're also afraid because we might be in a room with a killer, right? Who is the killer? You. You might kill your own motherfucking ass, right? If you're all by yourself. Because you're so used to being attached to something being attached to her or, or it's her being attached to you. They, you notice some people can't be by themselves. Every time you see them, they're with somebody. I've been able to be blessed with the ability to be by myself. I roll by myself. I come to work by myself. I leave by myself. But I, you know, I have a woman, but I still have time where I'm by myself. I don't have to worry about somebody jumping in my car with a gun or with some drugs, throwing it under my seat, because I'm by myself. I ride right. my own beat. Right? And that's cool and that's safe for me. I don't have to worry about so-and-so over here, they got all these enemies, and I just gave a ride to the bus stop. Exactly. And they said, they know that motherfucker right there. Right? And started following me on the street, shoot my damn car. I'm saying, well, what did my car and me do to you? Nothing. You got that motherfucker in the car, which I said, why did you wait till you got out? The car and did So I, you know, I can't, they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that makes right. sense. They make sense out of nonsense. So I don't, you know. So anyway, uh, number 10 says, uh, children, do you stay because of your kids? And so I would think that's a real, it's healthy in a, for some point, but it's not always healthy because if mommy and daddy can't get along and mommy and daddy is cutting each other up with knives and razors, 
And it's very, they're present. That's not good for the kid. Uh-huh. It's a lie. You're blaming the kids, but it's really you. I had a great uncle, my grandmother's brother. He had 12 kids from the little one to the big one. After they all grew up and were grown, he left the wife. The wife divorced. Stayed there the whole time. Oh, for the kids? Yeah, over those years. And after all the last kid grew up, they got divorced. And that's yeah. that's a that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Not on his behalf. So what did he did, did he go and make 15, 20 more? No, he, he married another woman. I remember her too. But um, he didn't make no more kids. You know yeah, what? He, he took a break. My baby mama told me that. You know what? She left me. And you know what? I didn't even just say it. 